Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Hedera and HBAR, so let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So, um, right now, at the current moment in time that I am recording this, obviously, you know, prices may differ when this does go up, but currently the market is having a little bit of a pullback. Um, I outlined in my XRP video that I am waiting for Bitcoin to actually drop down to about like roughly the 21.5 to 21.9 K area before, you know, further continuation upward. Um, and yes, this will bring, you know, H bar down a little bit currently at the moment, you know, we are trading just under seven cents. Uh, we hit about seven and a half cents earlier. Um, I know that this is currently showing like the 22nd at about 9 a.m. Um, on the one month spend, you do see like this is resistance. Even on a three month spend, you can really kind of see the resistance there going back as far as like roughly the uh, June time frame, June 21st to be specific. You know, this is when it ran up to about eight cents. You guys do see that we missed that just slightly. Um, which is a lower high um, at the current moment in time. Um, are we going to make a lower low or a higher low? That's the question because recently we just touched this bottom support once again back in the beginning of July. And remember, the more times that we do test not only resistance but also support, it weakens and it allows it to get broken. So if we do test this support more times, and I, I do think on the third time down, it might actually be either a triple bottom or it might be the time that we do break it and go down even lower. But of course, I know that a lot of people have been saying like, you know, how do you expect all coins to say, you know, go lower if you think that the bottom is in on Bitcoin? I want you guys to understand that there's multiple ways that all coins do get decimated, even though Bitcoin doesn't go down. Like if Bitcoin pumps while, you know, Bitcoin dominance is pumping, that means that money is actually being moved away from altcoins and into Bitcoin to not only you know, complement the push up, but a lot of people are just kind of jumping out of altcoins and supporting Bitcoin's move. That is what we call a Bitcoin season right before an alt season. Just to kind of give you guys a quick insight on that. Doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to fall for altcoins to fall. You know, they fall a lot of the times, you know, opposed to Bitcoin. But nonetheless, today we actually have a few things to really kind of address and talk about. So first off, we do see SaucerSwap um, announcing a partnership with the HBAR Foundation. Through this partnership, SaucerSwap and the HBAR Foundation will accelerate the development and adoption of DeFi on Hedera. More details to come. And uh, yep, over here we do have this open already. You know, we would not... Uh, or sorry, we could not be more excited to announce our support of SaucerSwap Labs, the pioneering decentralized exchange on Hedera through this partnership. The uh, untiring work of the SaucerSwap team and the support of the HBAR uh, community, we're taking the DLT industry into the next generation of DeFi. What do you see down here? The decentralized exchange, you know, leverages both the um, HSCS and the HTS, inheriting, you know, the full advantages of Hedera. This enables blazing speeds with finality, low with predictable fees, and the end of front running and DAO based governance for maximum decentralization. And of course, down here, we do see recently Hacking Club audited Saucer Swap Labs, finding 10 out of 10 security uh, scores on um, all contracts and an overall rating of 9.4 out of 10. And you guys do see that down here. Uh, Saucer Swap's vision is to be, you know, a protocol that serves as an onboarding ramp for HTS projects in an emerging Web3 economy and also incentivizes bridging, you know, cross-chain liquidity to Hedera to enable maximum adoption. So far at launch, the decentralized exchange will work seamlessly, you know, with Stator Labs, HBARX, uh, Headstarter Org, Circle Pay, Dovu Official, Tune FM Official, and also Creamy's NFT. Down here, we do see them posting the article, which I do have over here. It's about a three minute long read, but uh, we really just kind of care about what they are, you know, really kind of focused on. We do see down here the protocol is based on the Uniswap V2 constant uh, product formula, which is basically just a fork of Uniswap, but it does bring also the efficiencies around Hedera to a Uniswap like um, decentralized exchange, if you will. And we do see down here, uh, here liquidity providers deposit a pair of tokens and an algorithm automatically makes markets for the token pair. Traders can easily swap between tokens in the auto uh, market maker. These or automated market maker, uh, these swaps incur, you know, fees of which a proportion or a portion is uh, distributed to liquidity providers as payment for work. Furthermore, liquidity providers can stake their LP tokens and farms for additional rewards. The team intends to be a one-stop shop for the DeFi uh, seen on Hedera, offering a full suite of services, including a token swap, liquidity pools, yield farms, single-sided staking, and more. So uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot here uh, to really kind of look at. And of course, up here we do see 
You know, Ethereum uses ERC-20 standard for token operations such as mint, burn, and transfer. Here, tokens are themselves contracts and are beholden, you know, to the limitations of the EVM on Hedera. However, token operations are performed on HTS, so they leverage everything on Hedera. And uh, I think that we're going to see a lot more adoption around this. And I also do believe that when we look at DeFi, it is going to be coming to, you know, Hedera in full force. And we actually do see down here, their vision is to be a protocol that serves as an onboarding ramp for HTS projects in an emerging Web3 economy and to incentivize bridging cross-chain liquidity to Hedera as a DeFi protocol. So swap aims to maximize the total value locked on Hedera by offering a full suite of services such as HTS project community pools, novel staking mechanisms, and other exciting features and uh, this is going to accelerate the rollout of our vision and you know provide incentives to Hedera users to get involved in the world of DeFi and of course you guys know what I've said about DeFi like that is a very large sector to you know focus on and it is crucial I always say that it's crucial to these networks to not only succeed short term but also even long term I do believe that DeFi is going to be a massive opportunity not only you know, very soon, but also going forward as well. Like DeFi is being spotlighted right now um, around the globe. So love to see it. And I think that that is going to be very special. And of course, we do see over here from the chain media, they are asking, do you believe that HBAR could have a market cap of $50 billion plus someday? This is actually a pretty funny question because I know that a lot of people probably just thought in their mind, of course, why wouldn't it? But then there's also those individuals out there that will constantly doubt the fact that HBAR could ever hit $50 billion plus in market cap value. And I just want to ask you guys down in the comments below, what, why do you believe that HBAR will be a $50 billion plus market cap token? Because I know that a lot of you are probably watching this. You probably watched all of my other HBAR videos. You probably, you know, have done your research on HBAR as well. And I just want to know, what do you guys think about HBAR hitting a $50 billion plus market cap? This would be a 50X, by the way, from our current price. And it would be sitting at about roughly $3.50. Remember, I've always said 3 to $6 on HBAR. And I know that there's going to be that one guy that comments down below, you know, when 3 to $6. You've been saying 3 to $6 forever. The reason why I say 3 to $6 is because look at the other tokens that were at the top 10. They always hit three to six dollars. Not only that, but the 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 market cap value of a lot of those tokens have hit some astronomical highs, like you know ninety billion dollars to one hundred and thirty billion dollars. So to me, I would say fifty billion dollars for what HBAR or I should say Hedera is focused on is pretty minimal compared to most. And also, I do believe that the technology around Hedera is, is what's really going to spotlight it into the top 10. And uh, I, I, I think that this is something special. Like, remember, Dogecoin hit over $90 billion in market cap alone. So why couldn't a token like, you know, HBAR hit 50 billion plus? And yes, I do think that $3.50 is likely. And I also do think that, you know, the 3 to $6 range is still, you know, 100% possible. Um, I don't know a time frame on it. A lot of people will ask me a time frame on it. Um, I'm tired of, you know, trying to give you guys a time frame on things because it just doesn't make sense to do so. I would say this. If I had to put a viable time frame on the three to six dollar um, move, it would be 2023 to around 2025. That is when you should be, you know, watching for HBAR to really kind of make some major moves. And again, I always say, Focus on what's being built as well around Hedera. That is what's special. Again, the DeFi sector, if we are going to see this being accelerated, all while we just see native staking go live, as well as like the NFT sector absolutely blowing up on Hedera, I would say that it's very possible that we could see a lot of growth go going forward just this year alone around Hedera as well. And of course, we do see here, uh, that's nice that Ethereum has a roadmap to be able to compete with Hedera HBAR. Why wait for this to materialize when Hashgraph already solved these issues from the start? And it is funny, we do see down here, Vitalik, you know, Buterin claims that Ethereum will be able to process 100,000 transactions per second following the completion of five key phases, the merge, the surge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. A quick breakdown of what each stage means down here. And of course, you guys can see this on the screen if you guys want. Let me open this up in a new tab while I discuss my thoughts on this. And here you guys have it. You guys can pause the video real quick if you want. Uh, just to kind of see the breakdown here. And then, of course, I do have the bottom here as well. If you guys do want to pause it there as well. Um, but the funny thing about this is I seen somebody say, yeah, they're going to be able to process 100,000 transactions per second at $100,000 as a cost. Um, and it was funny, right? It made me laugh. Um, 
because it is the truth. Like they already said that POS does not, you know, mean that it's going to lower the gas fees or the fees per transaction. It just allows for it to be scalable. And it's laughable because again, you're not seeing the efficiencies of, you know, Hedera on Ethereum. You're just not going to achieve that. Um, I've always said like, you know, a lot of these networks, a lot of these major assets as well need to be upgraded in order to even try to compete with some of these layer ones. And, you know, I, I look at it as a way as like, you know, you could either buy the tube TV or you could buy, you know, the flat screen. Which one are you going to, you know, like it's 2022, right? Which one are you going to buy? Are you going to buy the tube TV with the VCR or are you going to buy, you know, the flat screen uh, with streaming capabilities already built into it? You know, it just doesn't make sense to keep buying Ethereum when a lot of these layer ones are already absolutely killing the game. And you might be wondering, well, Nick, do you hold Ethereum? Because I did say on Twitter, I said, you know, Ethereum is trash, but it does make me cash. And yes, I will be buying, you know, Ethereum at, you know, profitable levels, because again, it just doesn't make sense not to, you know, make money. I mean, who hates making money? Um, of course, Ethereum will make a lot of individuals rich, but, you know, for the longest time, it made the, you know, miners rich. And the miners were like a monopoly system, if you will, around it. Um, and now they're getting rid of that. So I would actually expect that this merge, this merge to, you know, proof of stake actually hurts it way more than people actually assume it to, you know, really do. Because again, those miners are crucial to actually keep the price going. And now that we're seeing that basically, you know, be killed, I'm telling you, this is actually going to probably be a cascading factor around Ethereum going forward. But yeah, I, I do think that it's funny that, you know, we are seeing a lot of these you know, we even see this with some of the other layer ones too. Like some of the layer ones in the space um, are constantly needing to upgrade their internal systems to actually even, you know, try to, you know, be us, I would say tech savvy as other ones, just because they are being outscaled, outworked, etc. cetera. Um, and also like even Solana, right? I've told you guys um, my idea on Solana. I think that a lot of people in the Hedera scene hate Solana way too much to actually understand the fact that like, you know, Solana does have probably one of the best marketing tactics around it. So it is going to print money. Like I, I do think that Solana is also another sort of idea on like it's trash. Sure. But it's going to make you cash. Like Solana next cycle could just be as big as, you know, Ethereum, for example. So it doesn't make sense to, you know, constantly talk trash on it. I'm not biased on my investments. I'm more so like, you know, focused on making money here. Um, but you know, Solana is also another, you know, asset that is in the top 10 that does need to, you know, do something. They need to try to fix their internal system because it is broken. That's why I do focus on things like Hedera that are, you know, here they're working. They have, you know, created such an incredible opportunity and also going forward, you know, I know that this is just text on a screen, right? Until we do see actions being made, you know, it's just text on a screen, but we do see it from H bar to the moon. Um, Hedera is going to create enterprise level network effects never seen before. Once council members launch apps on Hedera and showcase the unlimited potential of this network, all other enterprises will want to tap into it to benefit their companies too. FOMO will be real. And uh, I actually do agree with this to an extent, right? Like you look at the network effects of Ethereum or even, you know, Bitcoin. And like, and remember, like this is not like mass adoption at enterprise and even financial institutional, you know, sectors just yet. Like this is just adoption of individuals investing. Yes, sure. There is some financial institutions that are invested into Bitcoin and, you know, Ethereum. There's also some major names invested into both. But, you know, that's not network effects through like use cases within the enterprise sector or even the financial sector. Like imagine once that actually goes live on something like Hedera and the network effects that that will actually have. That is what I'm actually looking forward to seeing, like live mainnet use cases that are generating so much volume to the point where like Hedera is actually experiencing a monumental, you know, network effect. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did definitely have a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As well as up to you all, have a beautiful day, a beautiful night, wherever you guys are on this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.